We'll get rolling. So, like best fit, RFA has required inputs to be able to do all your analysis and calculations, right? So this presentation will go through the input data. The, the, so we're going to talk through the four types of input data, and we're going to discuss um, how they kind of fit in the overall framework. You kind of saw the framework, so we'll kind of reiter reiterate how they kind of fit back into that framework and then look at how we enter that into RFA so that when you get to that point in the workshop, you, you'll have some familiarity with it. All right, there's four types of required data in RFA. There's the discharge data, discharge gauge data. We got stage gauge data. We got our inflow hydrographs and our all important volume frequency curve, which kind of, again comes from best fit. So the objective again of this lecture is just kind of walk through each one of these and just see how it all kind of works in RFA. So before we get into this much more, we just want to remember, you know, to always we talked about this a little bit ago, talk about always check your data. So the raw data investigation is really one of the most important steps to any dam safety analysis, really any analysis you do in, in general, any kind of study, you should really know your data. So many of the data sets have numerous occurrences of missing data, faulty data. Um, you got other issues that can come up and impact the study. So the quality of the data that you analyze really goes a long way and have a large impact on the quality of your results that you obtain from, you know, really any computer program, including best fit and RFA. So, so in addition, you should really, you should really know what data records are available. You want to know how and when any of, uh, like for reservoir, how any of the operations have changed, um, anything that's been executed with it. Uh, so the analysis relies on a period of record. So the entire data set used you know, it needs to be homogeneous uh, and not from a mixed population. So, especially with stages and operational lakes, you can, there's a lot you need to make sure is correct. So, we've got this crazy slide with a lot of red and, red and green. So, um, we're looking at a daily stage data with, with some issues, right? So, it's important to identify and understand the changes and things like the vertical datum, if there's upstream regulation, operations, of the dam, any kind of main man-made changes or operations that might have occurred, so measurement errors, missing data. You just kind of want to look across the thing and make sure you understand where all the results are really coming from uh, and make sure it's consistent and representative uh, before you use an RFA. So correct any data errors beforehand and consider you know excluding or adjusting data. Uh, and so the data that doesn't need to be adjusted of course there's also there's always data that does, may not need to be adjusted that like natural variability so if you get droughts or floods that are extremely low or extremely high doesn't mean eliminate it it couldn't be from natural variability but if it's a man-made drawdown or some something going on in water management or something at the project that you probably wouldn't want to include right so all right the first set of data required to perform, you know, any simulation in this is, um, is, is a record of daily. So it's our, our gauge data. So it's an entire period of record. Um, we got to use the entire period of record uh, that's available and appropriate, of course. And so this data should be a continuous record. So that's important. So discharge gauge data is used for computing the flood seasonality and the empirical frequency gauge curves, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But Again, it's important that it's a continuous record. So the first step in the, to input the data set, the data, um, the discharge data is, of course, it's going to be a similar theme in RFA. We're going to put a name and description in. So then we're going to enter in a time window. Um, and remember that data must be continuous or your time window will be continuous. Um, so there's no gaps or missing data in there. But it, it, there are some options to be able to um, estimate the missing data, interpolate it. Um, but you can also do that outside the program before you bring it in. Um, so note that when you create a new gauge times, a, a discharge gauge, that the time step option is grayed out. Um, it's set to one day and cannot be changed. So this is because a discharge gauge and a stage gauge require mandatory one day time steps. So once you filled out that start and end date, um, you resize, you click the resize button. So that's going to reshape the table below to the length of the time that you've you put into the time step and once you've got that you can enter in the data so of course you can hand type in or you can paste in 
hopefully you choose to paste in if you're putting in 60, 80 years of daily data and not type in. Um, or you're really bored if that's the case. Uh, so once that data is in there, it automatically populates in the window below next to it. And so you can see from the window if there's anything erroneous, if there's any high points, low points that doesn't make sense. Um, is there any gaps? You just want to give it a good quick look over and make sure it all makes sense. It kind of checks out with what you're expecting. So the procedure for entering stage data is really the same as the discharge gauge. So the only exception being that the users are entering daily stage instead of daily inflow. So with the date, so like with the discharge gauge, the stage gauge should be entered as a period of record that represents the current operation operating procedures. So you don't want a mixed operating procedure record. Um, stage gauge data must be a continuous record with no gaps. Uh, and the user can have the software interpolate again, missing data if you want. Um, the stage data, Gauge data will be used later to in the analysis for developing the monthly stage duration curves and the annual empirical stage frequency curves. All right, third data type. Uh, this is our inflow hydrograph shapes. So a shape of the hydrograph reflects the response of the watershed to an event. So multiple inflow hydrographs should be used to account for uncertainty in this type of in the simulation to account for that uncertainty in the water, watershed response. So the inflow hydrograph shapes are scaled up and down based on the sampled inflow volume of the flood event from in within the stochastic simulation. So inflow hydrographs sh should be representative of critical of your critical duration. So for example, if a three day duration is selected as the critical duration, the inflow hydrograph will scale based on the three day volume. So inflow hydrographs can be based on observed flood events. And it could be based on reconstructed historical flood events, synthetic flood events, uh, such as like the uh, like a PMF problem, maximum flood, a standard project flood or standard design flood. And you can generate some through precipitation frequencies, but you, there's a lot of different sources you can get um, for hydrograph shapes. So for this type of analysis, the inflow hydrograph should be unregulated though. You should not be pulling in regulated hydrographs. So the preferred method for rule of thumb there's three to five large observed flood events. All right, when selecting inflow hydrographs, consider the type of flood generating mechanisms for extreme floods in the watershed. So smaller watersheds dominated are usually dominated by more intense thunderstorms events. They're, they're gonna typically have uh, relatively shorter durations, only maybe a few days or less, whereas larger watersheds um, dominated by snow melt driven, you know, snow melt driven floods are typically going to have a much longer duration on the order of weeks to months. Um, and just notice on here that the, the y axis is a normalized discharge. So um, if you go from looking at them in regular scale, you might not note uh, that they are very similar or different, but when you normalize them and compare them, it's important to compare that they are different. You want different and when we talked about relative frequency and we have five events if you have five different ones you're expecting to sample each one 20 percent of the time if you normalize them and you find three of the five are basically the same event you're basically telling the simulation 60 percent of the time our watershed responds this way 20 percent these other two ways that might be true if you've done the study to prove it if you haven't done the study to prove it you're basically um, assuming that if so, it's always important to, to compare those in a normalize to make sure that you actually are pulling in different shape um, hydrographs. Yeah, yeah, based on the each event is normalized. Yeah, yeah. So that yeah, normalized to one so that it all compares relatively the same. Yes, sir. It's scaled by the volume, but it's normalized with two slides away. <laughs> Here are a few of the uh, potential data sources uh, to search for inflow hydrograph data. Information like, so look through here. So information can often be found in water control manuals, water management databases, project reports, post flood reports, USGS reports. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of different sources dig through the material and try to find, especially those historical ones. Um, and then of course the recent ones are a little bit easier to find. 
All right. Um, and maybe it's three, three. So entering the inflow hydrograph into the program is similar to the way we've done the other ones. You're first going to give it a name um, and a description. So, and then from there, you're going to give it a time window in which you want to enter that in. Uh, so now you can enter in the time step for your hydrograph. So it's an hour, six hour daily. You can enter different time steps. Um, from there, you can click to resize again the, the window so that you can then paste in that uh, paste in your hydrograph shape. As soon as you paste that in, you're going to see it populate in the, the window to the right. So again, we mentioned rule of thumb, three to five storms, three to five uh, hydrographs. All right, so RFA, as we mentioned, scales the inflow hydrographs. So when it's running the simulation, so it, it's, you have a spreadsheet. Hopefully, you have the spreadsheet 2.2 Excel. You all, I should have told you this earlier. If you've got it, open it. You can look at it. So I'll give you a second if you want to open it up. Uh, maybe a few seconds if you want to open it up. Because I'm gonna, I'll talk through it, but I'm not really gonna show it a lot here. So. Um, but this spreadsheet will show you, it's kind of, this spreadsheet's built so that it shows you kind of how RFA scales the hydrographs. So it normal, so we're going to see it's going to normalize and scale. So that's why we like to normalize it in, in the first place um, on the outside. All right. So if some of you got in there, you we good? All right. So. Looking at the first tab, um, the very first thing an RFA does is normalize the inflow hydrographs, kind of like you see up here in the picture. Um, in, the, in the figure, you can see uh, several inflow hydrographs. I'm hoping this plot of the normalized hydrograph shapes uh, would, so just for reference, a plot like this that you're seeing is something good to throw in a report because then you can express and talk about how these things are actually compared and how they're different. It's a, it's a pretty handy tool for um, telling the story and reviewing. So to normalize the, the inflow hydrographs, RFA takes the peak inflow volume for the hydrograph and divides each ordinate by the peaked value. That's the way that the hydrographs are normalized to the three-day volume. All right, now switch to tab two. So this tab will show how RFA scales up to a normal uh, to, to normalize the hydrograph during a simulation. So first, RFA computes the maximum or peak volume. For example, if the critical duration was three days, the maximum three-day volume will be computed. So the formula equals average is used in there. Um, so second step is RFA compares the sampled volume from the flow frequency curve. Next, RFA divides the sampled volume by that maximum critical duration volume to develop a scale factor. So we've got a new factor to scale by. And so last, RFA multiplies each ordinate of the observed hydrograph by that scaled factor. So this process preserves the sampled volume and occurs at the same time in order as the maximum value of the observed hydrograph. So you can play around with this as you as you want later on and, and use it later on if you're ever doing a study to help get those normalized graphs for maybe a plot. But you can see that the it's at the same order, the peaks at the same order, it's just taking the scale and it's just factoring it up by whatever that duration is, that your critical duration is that you told the model to do so all right the inputs to the info the volume frequency curve come from again best fit right so you start just like the all the others uh, input the name and description uh, then you need to select the distribution type and, and and enter the 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 parameters that go along with that so um as you know most of the time we're using lp3 and we have our mean center deviation skew um, but we also now have our ERL and you have your critical duration that you're telling it. So the, um, once these parameters have been input, of course, you can click, you can click uh, oh, so there's also just a note that there is a drop down menu. You can select other distributions. Um, right now, it's not really recommended to do so. There are some other things that need to be fixed along with best fit so that they pair together. So if you want to run GEV and best fit, you'd have a more, a better option in GEV in here if you ever do that. Right now we're doing log person three. So so once again, once you have those in there, you can hit the compute. Um, it's gonna generate uh, your your curve off to the to the figure in the right. So it's gonna generate the, 
the computer curve with its confidence bounds for the 90% uncertainty bounds. So this plot, again, is automatically updated. And so be sure to compare it to the compute compare the computer curve here with your posterior your posterior mode curve from best fit just to make sure they're on task but there should be basically the same so